Hey everybody, Jeremy from Blockchain WTF here. Today we're going to go over a tool that will help you send your ERC20 tokens with ease, ETH Gas Station. To fully benefit from the ETH Gas Station website, we have to go over a couple of concepts about gas. No, not that kind of gas, the gas used to power the Ethereum virtual machine, or EVM for short. Essentially acting as fuel for the network, it's what makes the Ethereum network go. Gas is not ether, but gas has to be used to conduct ether transactions. Something else you should know, gas price. Gas price is the quality of fuel you are purchasing. The higher the gas price, the quicker your transaction will be confirmed. However, increasing the gas price is also going to result in higher transaction fees. There's no one good gas price, as the conditions of the network changes depending on how many people are using it. A sufficient gas price yesterday might not be sufficient today. It changes. Something else we should go over? Gas limit. Gas limit is the maximum amount of gas you're willing to spend on that transaction. You're not pledging to spend that much, it's the maximum amount you're willing to go. So if the amount exceeds your specified gas limit, the amount of gas used, the transaction will fail and you'll have to resend with a higher gas limit. Not that big of a deal. It essentially keeps you from paying insane fees. So Gas price multiplied by the amount of gas used out of the gas limit, not exceeding the gas limit, is going to equal your transaction fee. Several ETH hodlers use Mu MyEther wallet as their wallet of choice. One note about Mu and gas, you always have to maintain the ETH balance, ETH balance, albeit small, in order to power any transactions you send using the wallet. This includes all ERC20 tokens, not just Ether. So if we head over to the ethgasstation.com, information on the main page heading to the website, you see a lot of information on that landing page. Let's break it down, go through it piece by piece. So the first piece I want you to pay attention to is the drop down in the top right corner. Uh, it is going to determine which currency you're going to be used for, using for the website. Uh, basically, it's a useful way. Uh, it just makes life easier for those who use the Euro, uh, pound, or Chinese yuan. So go ahead, select your currency of choice, and then you can essentially go through all this data and figure out the gas price you want to use. So the first box on the header is your average standard transaction fee. So looking at that number, we can figure out how congested the network is at that time, since more congestion equals higher fees. Even at its most congested, Bitcoin fees make ETH transaction, transaction fees look minuscule. I've been seeing average fees for Bitcoin consistently over $50. Last week I had to use Bitcoin for two payments under $100. I paid a $15 fee each time I sent that Bitcoin for a total of $30 in fees. It was like 25% of my transaction. It was ridiculous. Now ETH fees are mostly in the cents, sometimes exceeding a dollar. And while they might be actually more, several more times expensive than other cryptocurrencies. A dollar is definitely an acceptable rate to those who aren't sending many transactions, something that I don't mind spending 60, 70 cents on a transaction. To me, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, 15, 16, $17, dollars. Uh, yeah, that's a big deal. So let's head over to the next box, and that next box is the average gas price that led to those transaction fees. Basically, the average gas price that people on the network are using. And these next two boxes are really useful. These are the suggested minimum price for a speedy transaction and the fee that you can expect to pay if you use that suggested gas price. Obviously, based off network traffic, that suggested gas price is going to change. And these last two boxes on the header show the median wait time and how many blocks it will take to get your transaction confirmed. Now, since Ether shoots for 10 seconds transaction times, waiting a couple of blocks is not that big of a deal. So essentially the goal is to pick the lowest gas price that will still get your transaction confirmed quickly. ETH Gas Station really helps out with that. They have this handy sliding tool that will show you how quickly your transaction will be confirmed at different gas prices. Uh, something to note, they won't go below the, on the slider their recommended gas uh, minimum. So that's just something to look out for. Uh, the box you want to pay attention to, though, is minutes on the slider. It's how long it'll take to get that confirmation. Now, there's usually a break or specific gas price where increasing the gas price by maybe one unit can drastically reduce wait times. Now, 
To take advantage of that, let's head over to the Transaction Pool tab. So essentially what you're going to do is just scroll down and look for the point where gas price drastically decreases confirmation times, and that's the gas price you should pick for your transaction. Another useful tool that they offer is a transaction calculator, and that simply gives you an estimate of a transaction fee based off the gas price you choose and gas limit you set if all that gas is to be used. That's just a handy tool uh, to use when you're trying to figure out what you can expect with uh, transaction fees. The last cool thing that I want to go over on the website is the gas burners. These are the accounts that are using most gas on the network, and some of them are identified. Ether Delta, CryptoKitties was up there before. Uh, others are just major accounts, and it's always interesting to go into their Ether scan, uh, check out what is in that account, all the tokens. Uh, a lot of them on the list of big gas burners are exchanges. So if you want to go see, uh, take a peek into the assets and how much, how many tokens and how much money these uh, exchanges actually have, this is where you want to look. It's just something cool uh, that kind of highlights the big moves in the network. So that's a review on ETH gas station. It's a really handy tool to use when you're sending and trying to determine gas prices because if you can pay less fees, why not? Why not save that money? If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of the blockchain buzz. Feel free to interact with us on social media, leave comments down below, questions, topics you want to cover, pretty much anything. And be sure to check out blockchain.wtf for all your blockchain information needs. I'm Jeremy and I'll see you next time.